In the suburbs near southwest of Houston, 11-year-old Leah Henry was on her way home after finishing school. By 3.30, the girl got off the school bus and set out towards her house. However, as two hours had passed, there was still no sign of her. Filled with worry, Leah's mother reached out to her ex-husband, Leah's father, hoping that he might have picked up their daughter along the way, and she would be with him. Unfortunately, he had no idea where Leah was. Despite the separation from his ex-wife a year ago, the father remained actively involved in his daughter's life. Leah had never run away from home before and was known as the obedient child who always returned home on time. Following a conversation with his ex-wife, Leah's father decided to contact the school to check if his daughter had been held back after classes. It turned out that Leah Henry had taken the school bus home with other students after finishing her classes. Following this information, the father reached out to the Houston Police Department, prompting a swift response. The police initiated inquiries with all residents in the Henry family's neighborhood, marking the beginning of their investigation. Thanks to this, they managed to get the first lead. One of the neighbors witnessed a girl resembling Leah getting into a white car after getting off the school bus. The parents were deeply disturbed by this news, prompting them to involve the most experienced detectives in the case of their missing daughter. While the detectives prepared for the investigation, Leah's parents reached out to all relatives and friends to share the heartbreaking tragedy that their family was going through. Meanwhile, Tim Henry, the girl's father, wasted no time. He was determined to do whatever it took to find his beloved daughter. He was prepared to search every nook and cranny, desperate to find her. Upon receiving information from local residents that a girl matching his daughter's description was spotted at a gas station in the company of several men, the anxious father immediately hurried to the scene to confirm if it was Leah. Applying pressure on the gas station manager, he quickly gained access to the surveillance cameras. However, the video was blurry and the girl's appearance was not distinct enough. The man wasn't confident it was his daughter. At this stage, FBI agents joined the investigation. After careful examination of the records, they confirmed that the father was right. The girl captured on the cameras was not Leah. Consequently, the case returned to its initial stage. Houston police, along with the FBI, feared that Leah Henry might be in the hands of a dangerous criminal. Several hours after the disappearance are thought to be the most valuable asset in any search, and the first lead often proves to be the most crucial. FBI agents re-interviewed the neighbor who last saw Leah. According to him, the suspect was a white male aged over 40, driving a white two-door hatchback. Throughout the night, desperate attempts were made to locate 11-year-old Leah Henry. The parents did everything possible to find their child a task both physically and emotionally draining as they couldn't sleep peacefully, knowing their beloved daughter was in danger. Despite all the horrors 11-year-old Leah Henry had to endure, she managed to survive. Leah bravely shared her story in detail, and it sends shivers down the spine. At the young age of 11, she faced the situation with a bravery and strength that I believe goes beyond what many adults could show in such circumstances. In a situation that not every adult could handle, she showed remarkable courage. As soon as Leah got off the school bus near her home, a white car approached her. The driver inquired if she was a babysitter. Mindful of the risks of talking to strangers, Leah politely declined and continued walking. Recounting the incident, Leah says, a bit further down the street, as I began to see my house, the man pulled over on the sidewalk in front of me, blocking my path to the other side. He asked if I wanted to meet his children. He was in normal clothes. He had glasses on. He was very friendly, nice to me. I felt like I was just with a normal dad, that dads were okay. After a few minutes of conversation, Leah made a fateful decision and got into the car. It's because of this decision that she would potentially save not just one child from the clutches of this monster, 
although she herself would become a victim. As they set off, the man reached for the door handily and locked it. Leah was surprised. She felt that something was wrong, but being only 11, couldn't comprehend the man's intentions. From that point forward, Leah found herself in a situation where she had no choice but to comply with an unfamiliar man who was taking her further and further away from her home. As soon as he pulls into the back alleyway of the local restaurant, I knew something bad was happening. I felt like I was going to be hurt. Leah was very scared, but at that moment, she still didn't know that the worst was yet to come. An hour's drive from Houston, the perpetrator's car stopped in an abandoned parking lot where he used Leah for the first time in his dirty pleasures. As they got back on the road, the car was not moving very fast, and the girl was examining the locked door handle of the car. She didn't know if she could force it open, but it could be her only chance for escape. In her attempts to free herself, Leah lunges towards the door, her hands bound behind her back. She blindly tries to manipulate the handle, but unfortunately, her efforts prove futile. The man, observing her struggle, calmly said, You will pay for this. He soon stopped again and punished her for her behavior. At that moment, after everything happened, I just wanted to give up, says Leah. He told me to crawl in the back, take my clothes off. Um, I didn't know what was happening to me. I tried to scream. I tried to grab things that could, if I pinched it hard enough, every other bit of pain would go away. But when he was done, I started to cry. The parents of the missing girl reached out to all television channels, seeking as much publicity as possible about their daughter's disappearance. In a matter of hours, they appeared on Houston television, making a heartfelt plea to the perpetrator to return their daughter unharmed. During the broadcast, the Henry family also addressed everyone willing to help. The community responded swiftly. Within hours of Leah's disappearance, a search team of 200 volunteers joined the efforts. Meanwhile, the FBI and Houston police were tracing the leads they received. One of these leads instilled hope in investigators about resolving the case. They discovered that a day before Leah went missing, attempts were made to lure four underage girls into a car, all residing in the Houston area. According to witnesses, a middle-aged man, under various pretexts, attempted to entice them into his white hatchback resembling the one Leah Henry entered. The police strongly suspected that the same individual was responsible for all these incidents. In one case, the man introduced himself to a child as a policeman, but his actions raised suspicion from a vigilant neighbor. As a precaution, the witness recorded the car's license plate number. After uncovering this crucial new information, FBI notified the media with updated details about the suspect and his vehicles. This move proved vital to gather all possible information. As experience has shown, even the seemingly smallest lead can lead to solving a case. In this instance, thanks to this, investigators managed to identify a striking similarity between the case of Leah Henry and two other recent disappearances. On March 4, 2001, in San Antonio, Texas, a nine-year-old girl was playing near an apartment complex when an unfamiliar man in a white hatchback approached her. The stranger asked for help, and from that moment on, the child disappeared. The perpetrator kept the girl in the house and repeatedly assaulted her. The unknown person committed terrible acts that caused physical suffering to the victim. After enduring four days of relentless suffering, the girl was dropped off from the car in a nearby neighborhood, not far from her home. April 16, 2001, in the state of Louisiana, an 11-year-old girl named Lisa Bruno disappeared from her yard. This time, the unknown individual posed as a police officer, and according to a witness, it was a middle-aged man driving the same white hatchback. Lisa was found after 13 days at the bus station in New Orleans and safely returned to her family. 
She recounted being taken to a cabin in the woods where he subjected the girl to his dirty pleasures. The horrifying details of those events ultimately persuaded the FBI that all three incidents were connected. The victims, aged between 9 and 11, were identified, and the culprit was seen driving a white two-door hatchback. According to every witness, the suspect was described as a middle-aged white man. In this way, it was known that the criminal had lured and later released two of his previous victims. However, it remained a mystery whether there were other victims. After 24 hours since Leah was last seen, her father didn't lose hope that his daughter would return home. Darling, I'm here. I can't touch you, but I'm close. I believe you're not far away, and we'll meet soon. Her father whispered before sleep. 11-year-old Leah Henry was in the hands of a true monster. Despite all the horrors she endured, Leah clung to life with all her strength. Hoping that help was on the way, the girl struggled simply to survive. Leah confronted an overwhelming fear that any escape attempt might result in unimaginable consequences. I was too afraid of everything outside of the cabin, thinking that everyone in the area was like him, or that if I was found, someone else would hurt me, and it would be worse. Meanwhile, as the little girl fought desperately for her life, the police uncovered new details in the case. Investigators uncovered a chilling pattern. The criminal targeted a new victim each time, cruising along the I-10 highway. In the media, he became known as the I-10 Predator. Importantly, the area could be a possible location for him. The police couldn't afford delays. Each new victim was held longer than the previous one, and the torment escalated with each occurrence. Finally, after 28 hours since Leah got into the stranger's car, FBI agents traced the owner of the vehicle. The lead pointed them to Amarillo, Texas, but the registered owner had sold the car and didn't know the buyer's name. Nonetheless, he insisted that the buyer perfectly matched the main suspect's description. With no additional evidence, FBI agents decided to re-examine the cases of the two previous victims, hoping to uncover the location of the cabin where Leah Henry might still be captive. According to the victim's descriptions, it was an ordinary hunting cabin nestled in the woods. Adding more detail, one of the girls recounted that during the car ride, she managed to remove her blindfold and glimpsed a road sign indicating Shiner, a Texas city three hours away from Houston. Suspicions focused on the area near the city of Seguin in Guadalupe County. Investigators had a fairly accurate description of the cabin, but that region had hundreds of similar places. Meanwhile, despite hours of extensive ground searches yielding no results, the police grappled with the challenge of covering an expansive territory. To expedite the process, the FBI sought public assistance, briefing the media with specific case details. However, before this information went public, there was a heated debate in the police department. The concern was that the perpetrator that the criminal might be monitoring the news and those who thought so were absolutely right. I remember him bringing home a newspaper that had my sister on it. And she was staring at it with this empty look. And all I wanted to do was comfort her. San Antonio media picked up Leah Henry's story, broadcasting all known details about the suspect's car and cabin. I held on to the fact that they were looking for me, that if they can fight, I can fight. Two days after Leah Henry vanished, the police units involved meticulously combed through all the records associated with the white two-door hatchback. Eventually, their search yielded a match. Months earlier, near San Antonio, a road inspector issued a warning citation to the driver of a white hatchback, who identified himself as Gregory Cox. Attempting to trace him, FBI agents discovered that Gregory Cox had already passed away, but his brother, Gary Dale Cox, emerged as a perfect match for the description they were looking for. The full name of the suspect was Gary Dale Cox, and in addition to his extensive criminal history, Gary Cox has been in and out of the judicial system for years. 
the police received information that he had been convicted on indecency charges in 1988, 1993, and 1995. This was undoubtedly a significant breakthrough in the investigation, although it did not diminish the fact that the criminal was still on the loose and a defenseless little girl remained in his hands. I think that's the first time I decided that I needed to make note of everything that was happening to me, because if someone was gonna find me, they needed evidence. Leah Henry made an effort to document everything happening around her to the best of her ability on the camera that was still in her school backpack. While Leah did everything possible to survive, authorities left no stone unturned in their quest to locate her. Thanks to continuous news coverage, practically every family in the U.S. knew that young Leah Henry was in the clutches of a monster. This information also reached David Billeter, an assistant sheriff in Kerrville, Texas. Sergeant Billeter was aware that their region housed numerous hunting cabins, which he believed were ideal places for someone to hide. On Friday, May 4th, four days into Leah Henry's disappearance, the chances of finding her alive diminished with each passing hour. Nonetheless, all police divisions remained on high alert. That morning, I told my wife when I was leaving for work, I'm going to get that guy today, recalls David Billiter. However, fulfilling his words became a race against time as the feared scenario unfolded. Media attention frightened the criminal and the man decided to flee. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew he was feeling closed in on. The newspapers kept telling us that they kind of knew who this guy was. Meanwhile, the sheriff of Kerrville received a tip from a witness who claimed to have seen a white hatchback resembling the one everyone was searching for. Sergeant David Billiter immediately headed to the sparsely populated area with numerous hunting cabins scattered across the territory. An interesting fact was that the police officer wasn't even aware of the existence of a road in that area, indicating how secluded it was. While Bill Eater combed the area in search of the white hatchback linked to the suspect, he noticed a red car with a different license plate. The police officer decided to explain to the owner of the property why he was there. When I got down the road, I saw a vehicle, but it wasn't the right color and it had the wrong license plate on it. The assistant sheriff halted his car in the middle of the lane, effectively blocking the only exit for the red vehicle. However, as soon as the sergeant stepped out of the police car, he saw the other driver brandishing a pistol. At that moment, the perpetrator realized he was trapped. According to Sergeant Billiter, the man slowly approached the rear of his car, opened the trunk, and ordered young Leah to go to the police car. He released the girl unharmed, except for the atrocities he committed against her earlier. It all happened so fast that I really had no time to think, and I just did it. As the girl ran toward, David Billider immediately recognized her as Leah Henry, and the man in his field of vision was none other than a serial thief whom everyone was looking for. Unable to drive far, a gunshot echoed through the air. Urging the girl to duck, he anticipated that a bullet might hit the car any second. Swiftly grabbing his police radio, he called for backup. I've got the girl. I'm on my way, Billiter reports. Despite the potential for a tragic outcome, they managed to escape alive, and Leah Henry was finally safe. I don't know if I felt safe yet, and I think what I needed was to be held by my family, because that was the only thing that was going to make me understand that it was truly over. When the police team returned to the scene, they found the man everyone had been hunting, but a surprise awaited them. To their surprise, he, he shot himself in the head. Within his car, they found a police badge, a stun gun, a wallet, and a driver's license in the name of Gary Dale Cox, the very man the FBI had suspected. It's good that he's not around anymore, that he can't do that to anyone else. But I really wish that I would have had a say in it and that he would have hurt as much as me and the other girls hurt. Inside the cabin, they found duct tape and rope along with records of Leah, detailing all the horrific things done to her. In the girl's backpack was a camera with photographs. 
it's chilling to think how close the criminal was to escaping. Meanwhile, in Houston, Tim Henry heard the long-awaited words he thought he would never hear again. We found her. She's alive. <laughs> I could drop the phone. I, I just, uh, we just jumped up. Police officer was there. Within five minutes, we were out of the house and the FBI headquarters. Subsequently, Tim and Linda Henry flew on a private plane to Kerrville to finally reunite with their beloved daughter. It's been 22 years since Leah Henry endured a traumatic experience, and now she is living a happy life. Achieving her dream of becoming a marine biologist, she continues to share her story with the world. I am extremely proud of Leah after everything she's gone through. She's really pushed herself to be successful and happy. The people who fought for my life didn't really know me, but their impact on me was profound. My days are filled with happiness, making my life truly fulfilling. It's worth living, says Leah Henry. <laughs>